Hello everybody, my name is Jane Simpkiss and I am the new art curator at Leamington Spa Art Gallery and Museum. This month is Pride Month and to celebrate I'm going to be looking at a picture that has really captured my imagination and that is Charles Shannon's Man with a Greek Vase, which is a portrait of his partner Charles de Susie Ricketts. In this short talk I'm going to explore who Ricketts and Shannon were, exactly what we are seeing in this work of art, and how the relationship between these two individuals affected this painting and their artistic output more broadly. So who were Shannon and Ricketts? Well, in this photograph, Shannon is on the left and Ricketts is on the right. They lived at the end of the 19th uh, and the early 20th centuries, and they met as students studying printmaking at the City and Guilds Art School in 1882. From that point onwards, they became partners in art and in life, living and working together on numerous joint artistic ventures. From an early point in their relationship, they decided that Shannon would focus on his painting, whilst Ricketts would work in more artistically lucrative areas to support him. This ultimately paid off as both found success in their respective fields. Ricketts is now best known for his illustrations, book, theatre and jewellery design. The historical records left by these two artists and their friends indicate that both men had a strong and intimate bond with each other. The portrait that we are looking at today was painted by Shannon in 1916 and is unquestionably of his partner Ricketts, identifiable in this and a number of other paintings by Shannon by his unmistakable pointed beard. Shannon produced several paintings of his partner, including uh, these two companion portraits currently in the National Portrait Gallery in London. And there you can see Ricketts beard. In this painting, Ricketts looks out at us making direct contact, eye contact, but it's hard to discern his expression. The dark tones of the painting could perhaps be seen as gloomy or sinister. However, it seems more likely that this dark palette was chosen by Shannon because of his interest in old master painting. Both Shannon and Ricketts rejected modern art movements such as Impressionism, which were popular in this period, instead taking inspiration from the Italian Renaissance and the more recent pre-Raphaelite movement. This undoubtedly explains the painting's rich gold, red and black tones. In terms of colour, light and texture, the painting bears comparison with portraits of old masters like Rembrandt. Shannon believed, in his words, that all really fine painting lent towards a darker key, which gave a sense of mystery about the sitter and left the viewer guessing as to his internal thoughts. This is clearly the case in this work. Although Ricketts was renowned for his wit and sparkling conversation, reports suggest that he was also pessimistic and solemn in private. Perhaps Shannon's painting was supposed to reflect Ricketts' internal character, showing us the man that he knew so intimately, but which others had only scratched the surface of. The gold screen and rich upholstery surrounding Ricketts suggest that this work was produced in the flat that they shared in Lansdowne Road in Kensington from 1902. Shannon and Ricketts lived together for the majority of their lives, building up a rich and idiosyncratic art collection that combined 18th century furniture, Japanese prints and Greek and Roman antiquities. And if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that Ricketts is holding one of these Greek antiquities. It's a calyx or wine cup that was part of their collection and is now in the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge. We can see a much clearer picture of it here. It dates from 15th century Athens and depicts a man naked but for a cloak over his shoulders and a, he's holding a lyre and a staff in his hands. This image would have been covered by wine when it was filled and only revealed as the cup was drained by the drinker. You can see that there's a uh, splotch between his legs and uh, scholars at the Fitzwilliam have discovered that uh, this is probably where Ricketts himself tried to uh, restore the man's genitals. And uh, although it was a very good restoration, it has now faded over time. The inclusion of the wine cup in this painting is highly significant. 
Through this image, Shannon is able to subtly reference his relationship with Ricketts at a time when homosexual relationships were taboo and homosexual sex was illegal and punishment, punishable by imprisonment. This wine cup would most likely have been used originally at a symposium, an all-male drinking party where men in ancient Greece would listen to music, poetry, or just uh, discuss topics of the day. And in fact, an image of a symposium is on the uh, external rim of this cup. By including the cup in this painting, Shannon aligns himself and Ricketts with this all-male world, and more broadly with ancient Greek culture, where homosexuality was widely accepted, and much more so than Edwardian England. Shannon and Ricketts' interest in Greek culture was shared by other homosexual men at this time, such as the writer Oscar Wilde. Ancient Greek references can be seen in Ricketts' own work, such as this painting entitled A Man Choosing a Mask, which is also in Leamington's collection. This is not the only portrait of Ricketts by Shannon, which shows an item from their collection. The dish holding snowdrops in this portrait, one of the two companion pieces from the National Portrait Gallery, appears to also be of an antique item collected by Ricketts and Shannon. So both of these paintings reference the shared collection that Shannon and Ricketts had, and subsequently their relationship and the home that they shared. Historian Matt Cook has suggested that Shannon and Ricketts' collection was a way for, them, for the men to articulate publicly the bond that they shared. There was nothing wrong with sharing a collection in this period, and in fact, uh, collecting was seen as a hobby uh, to be praised uh, in keeping with Britain's imperial spirit and was a sign of a cultivated mind. Shannon and Ricketts' collection was a way to conform to Edwardian uh, expectations, whilst expressing their non-conformity through their unique and joint taste. Furthermore, by welcoming like-minded individuals into their home to see their collection, they could further shape and express their sense of self. Oscar Wilde was a frequent visitor, remarking that it was the one house in London where you will never be bored and where you will not be asked to explain things. Nothing should be explained. Shannon is concerned with the ideas of public and private in this image, just as he was in real life. The image is an intimate one by the artist of his partner, but because it's a painting, anyone can view it. Are we, the viewer, being invited to share this space with Ricketts and Shannon? Or is Ricketts leaning over to talk to the artist in private? Ricketts' inscrutable expression will always keep us guessing. Shannon's reference to their house and their collection shows the deep connections between his life and his art, and the ways in which both he and Ricketts use art to identify themselves and find a way to express their relationship in public and private. Ricketts and Shannon were said to complement each other in life as in art. Shannon was described as quiet and inarticulate, whilst Ricketts was restless and eloquent. Oscar Wilde said that Ricketts was like an orchid, whilst Shannon was like a marigold. They worked on joint projects such as the Dial magazine and other illustrated books and journals, which they published from their house, The Vale, in Chelsea in the late 19th century. Sadly, in 1929, Shannon fell off a ladder whilst hanging a painting in their home and suffered serious brain damage. Ricketts sold and donated items from their collection to pay for his nursing costs. Ricketts died two years later of a heart attack, thought to be induced by the distress of Shannon's accident and exhaustion from work, and Shannon died six years later. On the surface, this painting may appear to just show a man holding a Greek vase in a dark setting, but dig a little deeper and it becomes a tender testament to the life of two artists and the objects and ideas that they shared and which bound them together. It's a delicate expression of their feelings and identities at a time when they could not be publicly expressed and an important historical tool for us to learn about how LGBTQ individuals lived in the past. Thanks for listening to this talk. If you enjoyed it, you can follow us at Lemspa Art Gallery for more information about our collection and other online activities or visit our website. Thanks very much.